basically what we have done so far is we have talked about the common ion effect. The common ion effect is one way for me to affect the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt and I'm suppressing or lowering the solubility of the salt. The idea is very simple. If I have the dissociation of the salt here and how do I suppress solubility of the salt? I add a common ion. I either increase the concentration of your cation or I increase the concentration of my anion. Then according to Le Chatelier's principle, when the concentration of the product goes up, position of equilibrium will shift towards the left. So less salt will dissolve, solubility will go down. Now the common ion effect is explicitly talked about in syllabus. So usually we will have a very uh, clear understanding. How do I suppress solubility? I add a common ion. But if I only know how to suppress solubility, but I don't know how to do the other way around, how to increase solubility, then it seems a bit loopsided, sided correct? If you want to be able to manipulate a salt, I need to be able to do both ways. Uh, depending on the process, sometimes I want more of the salt to dissolve. Sometimes I want less of it to dissolve. So I need to be able to manipulate the solubility of the salt both ways, then you can truly manipulate the system. So as mentioned, common ion effect is explicitly talked about, but it focuses on suppression of your solubility, lowering solubility. What we want to do next is we want to talk about processes to increase solubility. It is possible for us to do that. If you think about it, if suppression of solubility is shifting the position of equilibrium towards the left-hand side by increasing concentration of my product, then how do I increase solubility? It's very simple. If I want to favor the fall reaction, I just remove the product. I either remove the cation or I remove the anion. Then position of equilibrium will shift towards the right-hand side. You dissolve more of the salt, solubility will go up. So we will talk about two examples, complex ion formation to lower N plus concentration, acid-base reaction to lower anion concentration. So let's take a look at the first example here. Now the first example involving complex ion formation targets this test here. How do I differentiate different aqueous halides? Now, probably we find this familiar because in the QA, uh, QA notes, the test for anions, we actually have this guy, test for your chloride bromide aldide. So by right, we need to memorize the observation and we also need to do explanation. Observation, if you don't want to memorize, you can just copy this wholesale from the QA notes, everything is inside. So involving chloride, if you add silver nitrate, I'll get a white PPT. Bromide, I'll get a cream PPT. I'll die, I'll get a yellow precipitate. Then followed by adding ammonia. Dilute ammonia will be able to dissolve your chloride. You need concentrated ammonia to dissolve the bromide. And your aldehyde is not soluble in any concentration of ammonia. So by right, all this information, we can actually pull this uh, from data booklet. It is again uh, in the QA notes. We can actually uh, refer to that. So uh, depending on whether you want to memorize it or you can refer to the data booklet, I'll leave it up to you. But I would think that we should be quite familiar with this because this test, we encounter this in organic chem. When I try to differentiate between different halogenoid alkanes, we are doing this here under physical chem, under solubility equilibria. We will do this in group 17 elements. We also do this in practical. So a lot of reinforcements for this particular test the observation shouldn't be a problem. So let's talk about the explanation, all right? Now explanation-wise, it's fairly easy. Your silver halides, silver halides, they're not very soluble. Sparingly soluble, KSP is very, very low. The KSP values are here. Of course, we don't need to memorize the numbers. We just need to keep in mind, chloride is the most soluble. Aldite is the least soluble. But when you put Ag plus from AgNO3, the IP will exceed the KSP for all of them. And so therefore, if IP exceeds KSP, precipitation will occur. All the PPT will come out. So involving solubility-wise, I don't think it's that difficult for us to remember because we can always deduce this from the observation when we add ammonia. You notice I add dilute ammonia, I can dissolve the silver chloride. I need to add concentrated ammonia to dissolve the silver bromide. So silver bromide seems to be harder to dissolve, right? Solubility will be lower. And even if I'm using concentrated ammonia, I will not be able to dissolve my silver aldehyde. So it means that silver aldehyde it is the least soluble. You cannot dissolve it in any concentration of ammonia. So from the observation with ammonia, we can actually roughly deduce the solubility trend. AgCl is the most soluble. AgI, it is the least soluble. Now, 
Next, let us consider the observation with ammonia. Now, interestingly, it's not just a purely straightforward idea involving, oh, your precipitate dissolves in ammonia. It's actually not that straightforward. What is interesting is when you put in ammonia, ammonia actually combines with Ag plus to form a complex. This is a diamine silver complex according to this dissociation. And when we have this dissociation, actually the K value for this is very big. Again, we don't need to memorize the value. We just need to at least have this appreciation that my ammonia actually binds very well with your Ag plus and it forms this complex diamine silver complex. Now take note, this Ag plus equals and your Ag surrounded by ammonia, this diamine silver complex, they're two different things. Ag plus equals is Ag plus surrounded by water. All right, it is Ag plus equals surrounded by water. Ag2 ammonia plus, this is Ag plus surrounded by ammonia. They're two different things, two different complexes. So this means that the concentration of Ag plus will decrease because it likes to bind with ammonia to form this diamine silver complex. And when the concentration for Ag plus decreases, what will happen is you shift the position of equilibrium towards the right hand side. And this is where, what we've talked about previously, yeah, if you take a look at what we have here, this thing here is exactly the same as what we've considered previously. What I have here, this thing here. What we are mentioning is, oh, what I'm going to do is we are talking about how do I increase the solubility of the salt? So we've mentioned that if I can lower the concentration of your cation, if I decrease the concentration of your cation, position of equilibrium will shift towards the right-hand side, so more of the salt will dissolve, solubility will go up. So this is exactly the same as what we are doing here. I am decreasing the concentration of your cation because this Ag plus equals now combined with ammonia to form something else. So the concentration for Ag plus decreases, position of the equilibrium will shift towards the right-hand side, more of the salt will dissolve, solubility will go up, all right? So if I consider silver chloride, because silver chloride it is more soluble, I only need to shift the position of equilibrium to a smaller extent, I'll be able to dissolve your silver chloride. Now, involving silver bromide, I need a higher concentration of ammonia. So when the concentration of ammonia goes up, position of equilibrium shifts more towards the right-hand side, the concentration for Ag plus decreases further. So Ag plus decreases more, PoE shift towards the right-hand side to a bigger extent, and the solubility will increase even further. All right, so if I have uh, concentrated ammonia, then your AgBr will start to dissolve. Your silver aldehyde, we say that the KSP value is too low. Solubility is very, very low. So even if I'm using concentrated ammonia, it's not capable of dissolving the PPT. Now, what we can also do is I can lower the concentration of my anion using acid-base reaction. So that's the second scenario, increasing solubility using acid-base reaction. Now, this is not in the notes. I think we can just briefly take a look at it, and it is very, very easy. Many carbonates are not soluble, right? Many metal hydroxides, they are also not soluble. So what I can easily do to increase the solubility for these carbonates and hydroxides is just simply using acid-base reaction. I can just use a H plus to react away my carbonate. And very simple, I remove the carbonate by acid-base reaction. Once the concentration of the product decreases, position of equilibrium will shift towards the right-hand side. Again, the idea is if I want to increase solubility, I want to favor the fall reaction by removing the product. I can decrease the concentration for my cation using complex ion formation. This cation go and form something else. Lower the concentration of the product PoE will shift towards the right-hand side. I can also lower the concentration of my anion, in this case, using acid-base reaction. Same thing, PoE shifts towards the right-hand side, increase the solubility for the salt. Hydroxide is the same. I can use H+, reacting with OH-, decrease OH- concentration, favor for reaction, and therefore, increase solubility. So, just to round things up, again, what we want to keep in mind is the common ion effect will suppress solubility because it increases the concentration of the product, shift the position of the equilibrium towards the left-hand side. So less salt dissolve, solubility will decrease. But we also need to be able to do the other way around. Then I can truly manipulate the solubility of the salt depending on what I want to do. I can lower the solubility of the salt. I should also be able to increase the solubility of the salt. So at least we, are we should be familiar with these two ways. One is by complex ion formation, 
uh, to increase solubility of the salt by removing the metal cation and favoring the fall reaction. The other one is by acid-base reaction.